Ähm, ja, hier mal wieder äh, auf Lasergruppen lernt. 129, 202, 127, 134. Äh, wisst Bescheid, immer noch hier am Pumpen. Äh, Jailbreaking Apple Watch. Mm. Let's go. If this kernel memory will, um, ah ja, und immer noch am Craften von diesem Bucket. So, we know the kernel base, now it's time to get some code in the execution in kernel end. So, CV5656 is a pretty good. It's user to free in, in the same IS centralized binary, but in the different branch. Uh, the problem here is that during the deserialization, the oystering object will be delegated, but the pointer to object still stored in, in one of the arrays. And later on, the array method will be called on this uh, delegated data, which leads to user to free. So if we can run this object with a object, like fake OS string, kernel which mode. point to attacker control we table, we can get the kernel mode. Der Apple Watch Kernel ist schon Open Source, ja, ne? So, the same IS centralized binary, which parse the binary encoded values and return the IS objects. Sonst macht es wahrscheinlich keinen Sinn, was der sagt. When the objects will be decentralized and save it to objects array. So, Nein! the set it in this micro, that basically store the pointer of an object, but not doing any memory measurement on it, like not retaining the object. This is bad. Because later on, when OS string will be casted to OS symbol, the OS string object will be delegated, but the pointer to it is still exist in one of the arrays. And in the case of chaos realized object, which is a reference to an object, uh, it will be retained, which calls the user to free. So we get the kernel level mode execution. And uh, the problem that we need to know what to execute in a kernel. So basically, there are no watches dump available in public in the time, as well there is no keys for watches kernels. So, and to basically to continue jailbreak, I need to know some part of a kernel. And I have an idea, why not create a fake OS string, point it to the beginning of the kernel, and basically read the kernel as an OS string chunk. Looks doable. Uh, the problem here is that even the object is fake, we still need the real Wtable offset. And the Wtable offset is stored in data const, which means basically yeah. I need some parts of the kernel to dump the kernel. It's like a chicken and egg problem. And I'm still looking for a way, is there any possibility to dump this Wtable just in a runtime? Well, it is. Um, As we know, the Wtable is stored in a data const in a kernel, and the data const is referenced in a kernel microheader, which means if somehow we can leak the kernel header, we can leak the data const address in a runtime. Uh, and the offset to the data const um, reference in a, uh, in a header is always constant. There are like 0x224. I determine it from similar external build. So if in runtime we can branch to start with the kernel plus this offset, we can leak the data const. And how we can do it? Just use it as a fake retable point. So the device will crash, the kernel will crash, but we will get uh, the data const address. Now if you know the data const, I was trying to calculate the offset for retable uh, by checking in the similar external build from the start of the data const to retable. Uh, Unfortunately, it's not just worked out of the box because there are, the kernels are different. So I was trying to tune it with this plus or minus four bytes delta, but in reality, it never works. So later on, I found that the difference are really significant between watchOS and the iOS. It's like more than four kilobytes of difference in a data segment. So this method is not working. Um, okay, after looking, it should be some other way to do it. Uh, and I look at all string layout in a memory. So for 32 bits, the size of the object is like 20 bytes, for 64 bits like 32 bytes, and the very first pointer of an object is a pointer to object we table, and which is more interesting than the layout of the we table. So uh, our bug triggers the user to free by calling a retain. And retain is a like fifth element in array. So I started looking, well, it should be some way to like reuse the information. Um, here's what, what I mean. Uh, we have the OS object 
clarity in the memory, and the very first pointer of a smooth object is point to object V table. Uh, and the V table is pointing somewhere in a kernel code section, and our trigger, which is IS object retain, is like fifth element in the array. Uh, okay, we have like through this head, and now each node is pointing to the next node in the fruit. And again, it's like the first pointer in a, this free memory chunk is a pointer to the next free memory. So, what if uh, we not relocate our string object? This memory will be marked as free, and uh, basically now it's pointing to the next free node in the fruit. This pointer will be interpreted as OSTing with table pointer. So if we call retain on it, it will basically branch out of bounds on the next node. This is what I mean. So again, we have the nodes, each node is pointing to other node. And uh, if we call the user to free without relocating an object, uh, one of the nodes will be interpreted as OS string. And the beginning of the node is a pointer to the next node, and this pointer will be interpreted as a pointer to a string we table. Then we call a retain and uh, run out of bounds, basically branch out of bounds to the next node. But what if we can control the next node? So if we spray a string objects, uh, make a few calls on a the heap, then basically trigger user to free. The pointer to the next node will be interpreted as a we table, which is um, now branching to the next node, but if this next node is OS string, we will branch just in the beginning of the OS string object, which is a we table. And this is what I mean. This is the initial state of the heap with like, some memories allocated. And I basically heap spread a lot of OS string objects. So we fill memory and trigger some of those OS string delegations. So basically, now we have holes on the heap and trigger the user to free. One of these holes will be interpreted as OS string object and point into the next hole on the heap. And when we call the retain, it will be out of bounds for the next node, which in our case is OS string. So we will dump a we table in a penny block. Uh, well, this method is working. Uh, I get working on 64 bits. I can dump a we tables on 64 bit kernels. But for 32 bits, it's pretty painful to make it work because of the uh, size mismatch on the zone size and the object size. So I said, oh, it should be some other way to do it. Well, I was looking for similar kernels, and I found that the reference to OS string is the OS string we table is in IOS centralized binary. This is interesting because our bug is in IOS centralized binary. And IOS centralized binary is referenced in IOS centralized XML. So say, OK, um, if somehow we can leak uh, one of the opcodes from IOS centralized binary, we should like calculate this with table offset. Okay. So yeah. Should be doable. Um, so I crash uh, in IS uncertainized binary during the <coughs> object initialization. Kernel will crash, device will crash, I get a panic log, I just copy it from a watch. Okay, uh, I think I focus on the talk and all of that. Now I know where it's the IS uncertainized binary idea. is uh, like play out over the start of the kernel. Which is interesting because now we can start to dump in um, the opcodes by penny clocks. So we can use the address we want to dump as the uh, address of our fake we table minus zero x ten. This we table is this um, point will be interpreted as a we table uh, and branch this address. Obviously the device will crash but uh, we we'll get a kernel penny clock and the register state. And the register state will contain basically the PC register, which is pointing to the content of the address. So I start dumping a kernel by 4 bytes by crashing the device. Um, using address as a fake quick table, uh, the watch 
crash, went into this restore, and now I need to copy panic somehow. That's a problem because it's not just work out of the box. So I need to jailbreak my phone, SSH to the phone, uh, trigger a special service, which basically copy panic from a watch to the phone, then copy it to a Mac, parse the panic, get the um, address content, put it into the assembler, get the opcodes, and update this address with like plus provide delta, upload it to a watch and repeat. So it's like, you can say it's a pretty painful way to, to dump a kernel. I can say it's pretty fun. Yeah, so I have a lot of panics and a lot of crashes. So viel zu mehr auf den Talk konzentrieren. So we, we need to start dumping opcodes in iOS serialized XML until we found a branch to iOS serialized binary. As, as soon as we leave this address, uh, we can start dumping all codes in iOS serialized binary until we found a reference to a string quit table. It could take like another 10 panics. Again, the full attack plan, crashing iOS serialized XML, dump the 4 bytes, put it in the assembler, read the opcodes until we find the opcode which is branching to iOS serialized binary. Leak the, and, uh, leak the address and start leaking uh, iOS centralized binary opcodes until we found the uh, reference of iOS string with Um Yeah, so it takes me like a long time to, to dump a kernel by this way, but it's, it's doable. This is how long it takes. Um, usually it takes like five minutes to recover a watch after a panic, and it takes another five minutes to fetch the panic from a watch. Because as I said, I need to still break a phone, as I said, a phone, and like keep trying and triggering the special service that is fetching all the panics. Then copy it to my Mac, parse it, and I really don't find any way to automate the process because I need to recompile the binary all the time and re-upload it over the Bluetooth to my Apple Watch. So it takes me just two weeks to come to retail. Uh, yeah, but now I have the Wii table, now I can construct my exploit. Uh, I use the fake OS string with a real Wii table, pour it into the beginning of the kernel, and start reading kernel as OS string chunks. We can even read them in a user mode using IRS to and get property. So I leave the kernel here, calculate the kernel uh, size from here, and dump the whole kernel into the user mode. Okay, we have a kernel, but there is no symbols. So, uh, the first thing I've done, I start looking for a kernel extension, basically a drivers in the kernel, which are pretty limited uh, to the kernel. There are a few ways of doing it. We can look for the XML, which is usually at the end of the kernel. We just have all the kernel extensions that are linked to this kernel. Or in a bad case, we can just look for a macro header uh, magic. And if you find the magic, we know this is the beginning of the sum of the kernel drivers. So ja, alright, ich glaube, das war's dann mal wieder für diese Episode. Ich denke, ich gehe nur hier raus, vielleicht, wenn niemand das findet, und das alles mit Lava flattert. Ähm, ein bisschen auf Distanz gehen, ist immer safer. Ja, soweit, so gut für diese Episode. Wir sehen uns nächste Folge. Tschüss.